How's it going everybody? So we're out in the shop with another daily vlog and I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I planned on doing with this particular daily vlog because originally I was going to release a video about me going to the Winnebago factory where they build their motorhomes and showing you all the behind the scenes for all that stuff but whenever I got there they told me that I couldn't film inside their buildings which I get you know they've got their They've got different things that is specific to them that they don't want me showing a whole bunch of people and all that stuff. I get it. It's 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 their property. They're allowed to ask me to not do that. And I'm okay with that because they were super nice and they were super awesome. And they showed us all these different things that they do that are just absolutely mind-blowingly awesome. Things that I didn't even know that Winnebago came close to doing in-house. Like all of their own aluminum work and all of their own framing and all of their own just all cabinets all it, it, it's crazy the amount of stuff that that company does so I was blown away by it but I couldn't film it and I didn't want to have a video release that was just me getting on a plane and going to their factory and then leaving their factory and getting on a plane and coming back home that's not very interesting for a vlog so what I wanted to do was actually answer a couple of questions that I get asked all the time. I'm talking about every single week on Facebook, uh, Messenger, Instagram Messenger, email, all those different things. I get asked these two questions literally all the time and I try and give the best knowledge that I can but I figured that because evidently people don't go back and watch the videos that I released like a year and a half ago where I kind of sort of hit on this. Now, I've got better knowledge now than I did back then, but because people don't watch those videos, I'm gonna do another one and hopefully it'll help you all out. So, the two biggest questions that I get asked is, how do I get my name out there so I can sell my knives and how do I price my knives? That's the number one and number two question of all time with me doing this and people being able to ask me questions. So we're gonna hit on both of them. The first one, how do I put my name out there to be able to sell my knives to people? The easiest thing to do, the easiest thing to do is get on social media platforms. I know a lot of people are like, eh, I don't wanna do that. I'm not trying to be on the whole TikToks and the Instagrams and the Twitters and the Facebooks and all that stuff. <laughs> I get it, but if you want to put yourself out there and have somebody buy something from you, they need to be able to know who you are, how you did that thing, and why they should do that. It's a big thing. You know, let's say Joe Bob is trying to sell a knife for $500, but Spiderco sells knives for $200. Why should I buy this knife from Joe Bob? But I don't know who Joe Bob is or what he does. Is that a cool looking knife? But why should I buy his knife? Spiderco's got 15,000 4.5 star reviews. They're going to go with Spiderco. It's cheaper and it's got all the reviews because everybody goes straight to Google reviews and they, they know that, you know, so and so had a story where they were successful with this knife and blah, blah, blah. They know all that stuff. So you've got to do that too. You got to put yourself on Instagram. You got to. You gotta show people how you make your knife, how what, what's unique about you, what you do, and what thought processes went into why you design a knife that way, and you know, how you heat treat those things. What were the what were the things that you went through to be able to figure out ergonomics and all of that stuff for how you make your knife? You need that backstory so that whenever people Google your name and your knife making, they can go, oh dang. Yeah, he's got that and that and that and that and that and that and that. Holy cow, people love this stuff. They want that. Partially because they want to be able to go, hey friend, look at what look at what I got from Joe Bob. Man, he made this knife and look at how he made it. Look at all the stuff that went into him building this knife. This is awesome. You know, this is why I spent five hundred dollars on this knife it was because of this. And all the stuff, you know, he's making these out of a one-car garage. You know, this is crazy that he's putting all this work into this, and I got it. They could care less about the Academy Sports Center knife, the Walmart knife, the, all those different things compared to your backstory. You know, that's a big thing. <laughs> it, 
it will make it almost sell itself because they understand what they're getting into and why they want to do that, why they want to purchase that thing from you. Now, one of the common misconceptions is, you know what, I'm gonna, I've been making knives for a couple years now, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel and uh, it's gonna help me sell my knives. Don't do that. <laughs> if you wanna make a YouTube channel because you wanna make a YouTube channel and you're okay with filming yourself, you're okay with doing the, you know, the videos and the editing and all of the stuff that goes into <laughs> that, cool, do it for that don't do it to help you sell your product because it takes a long time to build a subscriber base on YouTube. You know, some people get lucky and their first couple of videos come out and the algorithm picks them up and they, you know, skyrocket to, you know, 500,000 subscribers and stuff like that. But that is very few and very far between where people like that get so lucky to where they can do that. Most of the time you're going to have people who do YouTube for a year and get 200 subscribers and they're going to put an absolute ton of work into it and get almost nothing out of it. So I'm going to suggest that you don't do YouTube unless you plan on just doing YouTube for the sake of doing YouTube and if it ends up helping your knife sales, fantastic. But just make sure you understand what you're getting into on that because posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, posting on TikTok, posting on Twitter and all the different things is so easy because you can just go picture, little video, little description, throw, throw it out there. It's that simple. There isn't hours of editing, there isn't all of the extra work, camera, equipment, lighting, all of these different things that go into it. It's very simple and you get your stuff out there very quick and very easily. So think about that stuff because that's going to help you get into the world a lot faster. Now. One of the things I would suggest you not do other than YouTube is Etsy. Etsy is great and all that, I get it, but when it comes to Etsy, they take a good portion of the actual sales that you make on there, plus you might be so showing something for $350 that is a cool Damascus knife or something like that, and then you scroll down to the bottom and they've got like six different options for fake Damascus knives that are like gas station quality knives that are made out of tin cans and uh, they're selling them for $39.95 and to a person who's not a real knife expert or anything like that they're gonna look at yours and go well that looks almost the same as this I can get that one for $39.95 heck yeah I'm gonna buy that one and then they just bypass yours and by the time you do actually get to sell yours Etsy takes a part of your money so don't think I, I would just suggest possibly not doing that. A lot of people that I'm friends with that have sold on Etsy, don't do it anymore. Uh, Etsy, don't hate me. It is what it is. Did it to yourself. So when it boils down to it, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm actually creating a website right now that will be launching here within the next week or so. So that for people who want to buy my stuff off of a website versus right now where I sell on Instagram, Facebook, in person, stuff like that, most of my knife sales come off of those things. People messaging me, hey, do you still have that one knife you made in that video? I'd like to buy that. Hey, I'll sell that to you. Boom, make a sell. So I will be having a website. I'll let y'all know whenever I release that. But for right now, I sell on the other things. But when it comes down to it, that's the things that I would suggest. Getting on social media, building a backstory about yourself and what you do and the things that you sell. The other thing is going to be pricing. When it comes to pricing, the easiest way to figure out how to price a knife is to figure out how many hours you put into it, how much your materials cost, and how many things you went through on your shop. Whether it be a whole bunch of abrasives, sandpapers for hand sanding, maybe you broke a tool during the process. You need to make sure that you're offsetting the cost for not just your time, but the materials. So think about that whenever you're pricing. You know, maybe tell yourself, hey, I'm going to work for $20 an hour, $30 an hour, $40 an hour, $10 an hour. Think about that. Add up your hours for how long it took you to make that thing. And then be honest with yourself about your material cost. You know, be honest with yourself. Don't skimp yourself on material costs because that still costs you money. You got to make sure that you're doing right 
by your own budget, your own finances, and yourself. I get it. A lot of people are afraid to ask customers $350, $400 for a knife. But if you spent 20 hours on something, you need to make sure that you're getting compensated for that because your time is the most valuable thing that you have. And whenever you invest your life into something like that, you need to be compensated for it. Don't be afraid to ask for it. That doesn't mean that you, you go on Amazon and you buy yourself a knife making kit where you get a blank that's already made, some wooden scales and some pen, and the most work that you did was glue the scales on, grind the profile on the handle, put an edge on it, and try and sell it for $400. Don't be that person. Be honest. If you hand forged a Damascus knife, there's a lot of labor that goes into that, a lot of wear and tear on your body. You need to make sure that you're okay with asking what you need to to get that income out of your time and don't be afraid to ask for it. I know that it's hard. If you sold your first knife for $85 and now you're on your you know, 20th knife and you're afraid to ask $400 for it, but that's what it's actually worth because you have you know, $120 in materials for some crazy reason and then you put 30 hours into that thing and you need to ask the appropriate amount for it, but you're like, am I worth that much? Is, is, you know, is Joe Bob worth this amount of money? I know I did this. I know I've broken a lot of knives to be able to perfect this thing. And I've went through a lot of steals to get to this point. Am I worth it? Yes, you're worth it. Don't be afraid to ask for it. If someone's willing to pay what you need them to pay, that's the customer that you want. Because... They understand what you put into it, you know, and it's a lot easier whenever, again, they go through your social media, they Google your name, Joe Bob Knife, and they have all the history for what you've done. They understand why you're worth that amount. You know, it's a big thing to be able to go into and see all that. So they, they tie in together. You know, don't be afraid to ask what you're worth. And don't be afraid to put yourself out there so that you're explaining why you're worth what you're worth because that is going to make people understand, again, I only buy my knives from Joe Bob because this is the stuff that he did to make this thing happen. It's a big thing. So don't be afraid, Joe Bob, of social media, okay? If you're actually named Joe Bob, please leave a comment down in the comment section saying, hey, I'm Joe Bob. That would be awesome. <laughs> so guys, hopefully this video helped y'all out. Hopefully y'all got some good takeaways from this. And you know, if y'all have any more questions, you know, my email's in the comments or the description down below. Y'all, the Facebook page is in the comment section down below. Uh, not comment, well, you know what? Just because I said it, I'm gonna put <laughs> my email in the Facebook in the comment section down below, but they're also in the description. But guys, Hopefully, again, this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section if you had a cool takeaway or you agree with me or disagree with me on certain things. Let me know about those in the comment section. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all make sure, give this video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And you know what? Thank y'all for being here and watching these daily vlogs. It's been really awesome having y'all you know, just comment and do all the different things and seeing the interaction with the videos and seeing how many of y'all are actually watching them. And I feel blessed. I'm super happy that y'all are doing that. And I'm going to keep them going. Thank y'all. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all tomorrow.